Hello, and welcome to Higher Way Podcast. I'm Lady Danielle Gay, First Lady of Higher Way Ministries in Petersburg. On behalf of my husband and our bishop, Darren L. Gay Sr., we are so excited and grateful for the opportunity to share this dynamic message of power and prophetic insight with you today. We pray that you open your heart to receive what the Lord has in store for you. So take a listen and be blessed. We're going to start at verse 57, the Gospel of St. Matthew, Saint Matthew's, Matthew's Gospel, the 27th chapter and the 57th verse. We're going to talk about the greatest event in history today. And that is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. It is the greatest, greatest event that ever happened. And it is the greatest event that will ever happen. Come on, somebody. And we're going to talk about it from a perspective today. And I'm going to give you my subject up front. Um, um, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about a borrowed tomb and a broken seal. We're going to talk about a borrowed tomb and a broken seal. Is that all right? All right, uh, read, Pastor. When the eve was come, Uh there came a rich man from Amathea named Joseph, Uh who also himself was Jesus' disciple. A rich man came from Amathea, and uh, he, he, he had money. Look at your name and say he had money. Man, you don't have to. You don't have to try to go after money. Money will find you. And when you have favor with God, money will find you in the right time. You can't be money hungry. Money will track you down. Discover your purpose, and money will show up. I promise you. Read the Bible. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Uh huh. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. Uh huh. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth mm. and laid it in his own new tomb. Laid it in his own new tomb. Uh huh. Read. Which he had hewn out in the rock. It hewed out in the rock. Read the Bible. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher uh-huh. and departed. Uh huh. And there was Mary Magdalene mm. and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Read. Now the next day that followed, the day of the preparation, Mm -hmm. the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, Uh saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Uh People will talk about you when they don't know where you're going. They will, they will misrepresent. They will, they will give you a name tag that's not even yours. Amen. They will call you something out of your name. Amen. But, but, but watch this. They do it because they don't understand your destiny. And when people don't understand your destiny, they have a tendency to talk about what they don't know nothing about. Read the Bible. Command, therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day. Uh-huh. Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away. Read. And say unto the people, he is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. Mm. Pilate said unto them. Pilate says unto them. Read the Bible. Ye have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. Make it as sure as you can. The devil is trying to keep you down, and he's trying to make it as sure as he can. But he don't have all power. He's got part of the power. The God that we serve has all the power. So he can make it as sure as he can, but our God is bigger, better, and greater. That's why you're coming out. Read the Bible. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Sealing the stone and setting a watch. Let's read the 66th verse together. Ready? Read. So So they they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting the watch. Sealing the stone and setting the watch. Father, bless this time in the word. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. This morning, amen, we're going to talk to you just for a few moments, amen, concerning a borrowed tomb and a broken seal. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, a borrowed tomb and a broken seal. 
Amen. I, 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 must, I must tell you that even as I progress and get into this message, amen, for me, I've been preaching now since I was 21, uh, 22, and um, I've been pastoring now for almost 22 years. Tell your neighbor, Bishop, don't look that old. <laughs> Amen. And so, and so I've been pastoring for 22 years and I've been preaching for some 30 years. And I must tell you that every Easter, amen, when it comes around, amen, there's, there's a tendency to want to preach, amen, the story the same old way in which, uh, you, 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 you're, you're struggling sometimes to get out revelation, amen, that's in the text. What I've discovered is, is that God gives you revelation according to the people that are attending the service. And this is for the preachers, amen. And sometimes you have to understand that he may not give you all of the message, but he gives you enough to relate to the people that's in the building. Which now brings me to this conclusive point, that it was not your clothes, it was not Easter that brought you here. You're not here by accident, you're here by divine appointment. Come on, tag your neighbor and tell him, there's no, it's no accident that I'm here today. Uh-huh, I'm here by the divine appointment. <laughs> Come on, tag somebody, I said, that means God's got a word for me. Anybody came for a word on the day? Anybody need to hear from God? Anybody need God to do something in your life? And so I stand before you today to just give you just that. Amen. I'm not trying to give you any style points. I'm not trying to get any style points from you. I'm not trying to tickle your ears. Amen. And make you feel good. Amen. Because there's going to be some stuff said. Amen. That's going to challenge your walk, challenge your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to get you to a place where you celebrate resurrection every day. Come on, tag your neighbor and tell them every day. Uh-huh. It's not about Easter buns. It's not about, it's not about Easter egg hunts. It's not about, amen, uh, the different clothes and the, and the suits. And Come on, somebody. It's all about Jesus. Come on, tag somebody and tell them it's all about Jesus. Amen. And so today, amen, as I begin to talk about this, I want you to see yourself in the text. Because as you see yourself in the text, you will also experience, amen, what the text delivered. Amen. Sometimes, amen, you have to understand, amen, that the Bible is written, amen, and it is written, but it's still alive. Amen. It's written in logos, but it comes alive in rhema. In other words, it's a revelatory word. It's a right now word for a right now situation. And, 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 and in our text today, we're dealing, amen, with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now understand that all four gospel writers, amen, wrote about the resurrection. That's how important, amen, it was and that's how important that it is. And you must understand, amen, that the power of God is not predicated upon just people coming to church. The power of God is on you to deliver you, to get you to your destiny. Oh, come on, somebody. In other words, amen, the power of God will show up on whoever it pleases. Uh, God will move on whoever he chooses. He don't just move on the preacher. He move on the alcoholic, too. Okay, don't nobody want to clap your hands and give God no praise. He don't just move on the deacon. He, he, he move on the prostitute, too. Oh, don't nobody want to give God no praise because I ain't call your stuff out. But he don't just move, he don't just move on the choir, he move on the alcoholic too. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you got going on. Uh huh, but God's gonna move in your life. Is there anybody need a miracle from God? Need God to do something? He has no respect of persons. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Amen. And even in our celebration, amen, during this time, amen, we come, amen, to the scripture. And here it is. Jesus' body has been taken by, jo- by Joseph, amen, and placed in his borrowed tomb. Everybody said borrowed tomb. Amen. Joseph's tomb is brand new. Joseph, amen, comes, amen, and we find out even in John that Nicodemus joins him. Nicodemus joins him to get the body of Jesus, and they wrap it up, amen, and they begin to bring spices, amen, and they begin to come down to embalm the body. And what you must understand about the embalming during that time was not the embalming that we do. The embalming to preserve the body during that time, it was, it was laid down, amen, and it was wrapped, amen, in spiked Lord clothing and linen and cloth, and it was wrapped real tight. And herbs and flowers and spices were put around and packed around the body so it would preserve the body. Hello, somebody. And, and, and they kept all their main organs in. That's why you discover in the Bible that people were raised from the dead. Come on, look at your neighbor and say they were raised from the dead. Amen. That's just a Bible lesson. And, and, and here it is, Joseph, amen, who has a tomb. Amen. He realizes that he's not going to need it before Jesus needs 
So what he does is Nicodemus is with him. Everybody said Nicodemus is with him. And if I had time to talk about Nicodemus, you know Nicodemus in John 3. You know who I'm talking about, right? Amen. The one that came at Jesus by night. Amen. Nick at night. You remember that? Nick at night. Amen. He came because he didn't want nobody else to know that he was trying to get saved. You know how we worship. Amen. Some of y'all worship just like that. I saw some of y'all going to get in the service, but you said, no, somebody watching me. That's a Nick move. When you don't want to worship, when you don't want to lift your hands real high. But some of us, we don't care because we done been through hell and high waters. And we don't care what you think about us. We'll come through them by night. We'll come through them by day. In fact, we'll come, we'll go there on, we'll go in at Walmart. We'll go in on our jobs. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, ain't no shame in my game. I'll bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And tag your neighbor and tell him ain't no shame in my game. Amen. And I want to, I want to depict this and I want to bring this to you because there are some things that you are going through and that now that you're in Jesus and Jesus in you, in Him do we live, move and have our being. In Him do we live, move and have our being. In Him do we live, move and have our being. I'm going to say it one more time. In Him do we live, move and have our being. That means, watch this, whatever is in Him has the power to do what He did. And if I'm in him and he's in me, that means whatever he did, I can do up. That's why he told the disciples, greater works than this shall you do. Come on, somebody. Just slap your neighbor with a high five and say, neighbor, now I understand why I can get up. I can get up because I got getting up in me. Amen. I can get up because my daddy got up. I can get up because my Lord got up. I can get up because my Savior got up. I can get up because Jesus Christ got up. Slap your neighbor with a high five and said, I don't care what you're in. Uh, it's resurrection time. Slap somebody with a high five and tell them three days. Three, three, three. Some of you on your first day. Some of you on your second day. But a few of us in here, we're on our That means it's just a matter of time. Touch somebody and tell them it's just a matter of time. My God, I feel like preaching a little bit, but just tag your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's just a matter of time. Come on, they done counted you out. They done talked about you. They done scorn you. They done scandalized your name. They done spit on you. And now it's time for you to come out. The devil done told you you ain't going to make it. The devil done told you you're going to lose your mind. But now it's time for you to tag your neighbor and tell him I've been in too long. Come on, grab somebody by the hand and tell him you better come out. Joseph and Nicodemus gets the body of Jesus. They go, amen, and they put it in Joseph. Joseph's new tomb. New tomb. Everybody said new tomb. Uh-huh. He didn't, he didn't put him in a tomb that was used. Amen. He went to the showroom. Got the best that they had. And put Jesus in there. Even though it was borrowed. Amen. So what Joseph did was, Joseph said, watch this. Being that I'm not going to use it right now. Right? Um, I'm going to let Jesus have it. <laughs> Y'all got to get this. And, 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 and when it's time for me to get it, because he done already been in there, I'm going to have resurrection power on me. Now I need about ten of y'all to give God a praise right here. Because the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. I wish I had somebody to give God a praise to let, you, to let the devil know you're going to get up too. Just tap about three people and tell them I'm going to get up too. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Amen. And it's borrowed. Tag your neighbor and tell him it's borrowed. Which means uh, I'm only going to use it for a little while. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm borrowing today, but overflow is coming tomorrow. 
come on, look at your neighbor and say, this is the last day I'm going to be borrowing anything. This is the last day I'm going to borrow $20. This is the last day I'm going to need a ride. God's going to bless me with my own ride. He's going to bless me with my own money. Tag somebody and tell them my borrowing days are over. Can you give God a praise if you know your borrowing days are over? Tag somebody and tell them it's just borrowed. It's just borrowed. I'm only going to be here for a little while. Come back and check me out next year this time. I promise you I'm going to be better. You got to understand. You got to learn how to give God a praise for borrowed places. For a borrowed season. Look at your neighbor and tell them I'm in a borrowed place. That means I'm working a a, a part-time job. I want a full-time job. But watch this. Even though I haven't gotten a full-time job yet, I'm still going to give God a praise over the... Okay, I need $5,000 at the end of the month to pay my bills, but I only have $3,000 a month to pay my bills, but I'm still going to give God a praise even though I'm $2,000 short. It's just a borrowed place. Come on, tag somebody and tell them you ain't going to be here long. Come on, look at your name and tell them, I don't know what you're going through, but you ain't going to be there long. Everybody said, borrow it, borrow it, borrow it. And then lean on and ask your neighbor, say, let me have $20, let me have $20. Don't y'all do that, don't y'all do that. It is, it is inevitable that we're going to go through some things in life. It's inevitable that we're going to have to endure some things. If life hasn't slapped, hasn't smacked you upside the head yet, keep living. Tag your neighbor and tell him, just keep living. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, many are the affliction of the righteous, but God shall deliver them out of them all. Weeping may, I feel like preaching, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I wish you would give God a praise because you know you're just in a borrowed place. This is only temporary. Tell somebody and tell, tell them, this, neighbor, this is only temporary. Real soon, I'm going to have my own business. Come on, somebody. I ain't going to have to live with nobody else. Real soon, I'm going to have my own house. Okay, ain't nobody. Ain't no, I ain't going to have to ask nobody else for a ride. Pretty soon, I'm going to have 30 day tags on my ride. Real soon, we're going to have to ask the, ask the, the, the city to, to get to school. We're going to have our own building. I need some, I need some expectance. I, anybody expecting anything? Anybody expecting God to do anything? Anybody anticipating God to do something? If you anticipate God to do something, you ought to give him a praise. I'm almost finished. And, and, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Everybody said Mary Magdalene. They sank, they came down to the sepulchre and, and, and they saw two angels sitting there. And it, it was the day of preparation, preparing for Shabbat. Uh, Preparing for the holy day, and and they were there, and they were, they they came to the tomb, and of course Mary Magdalene, she knew that it was his tomb, because she smelt the fragrance. I ain't got no up in here. Okay, nobody missed that. She she smelt the fragrance that she that she put on his body, that she anointed his head with. Come on, somebody, she smelt it. So they're there at the tomb. Look at your neighbor. Say they're at the tomb. And the stone has been rolled away. Watch this. The stone isn't rolled away so he can get out. The stone is rolled, is rolled away so they can see that he's no longer there. Y'all look at me real good. Watch this. There are some people going to come back looking for you where they left you. I ain't preaching to nobody in here. But they're going to be in for a rude awakening. Because if you think I'm going to stay like this, I need about ten praises in here. If you think I'm going to stay like this just because you left me, just because you walked out on me, just because you turned your back on me, I dare you to slap your neighbor with a high five and tell a neighbor, I will not be here when they get back. 
If you leave me now, I won't be here later. There are some people that when they see you, they expect you to be worse. Watch this. Being there no longer with you. But I dare you fix yourself up. Make yourself look like a million dollars. Make yourself look like you're going, got it going on. Ain't got no praises in here. Snap your neighbor with a high five and say, neighbor, look like you're going somewhere. I don't care if you ain't got but one dollar in your pocket. Wash your face. Get some Vaseline and put on your hair. Shine your shoes. Amen. Make yourself look good. Because when they come back looking for you, they're going to be in for a rude awakening. I done took it to another dimension, baby. You should have stayed here. And so Some people can't handle the process of your pain because, watch this, they pleasure in your failure. So you got to understand, amen, that the pain that Jesus was about to endure, that he had to go through coming all the way up to Calvary, amen, understand that even his disciples denied him. Everybody won't stick with you when you're going through. Watch this, because they don't, they don't want their hands to get dirty. And what they don't know is their hands are already dirty. Come on, tag your name and tell them you already got some dirt on your hand. Amen. We just can't see the dirt, but we know you got some there because you made a dirt. You got to have some dirt somewhere. And Mark, what happens in the text is, is baffling because here it is. They come and Mary Magdalene and Mary and, and the body is gone. And I'm, I'm not going to get into the linen clothes and the napkin. Amen. But I love that napkin. Because the story of that napkin is amazing. This is when I learned about that napkin, man. That, that thing blew my mind. And they, they saw the linen clothes. And, and watch this, man. Like if somebody going to steal something, they take the whole thing, right? Like if I'm going to steal this, this box right here, I, I mean, ain't no money in it, y'all. Just prayer request. If I'm going to steal this box, I'm going to take the box, right? Watch this. What they did was, what, what, what they did was when they went in, they saw the linen clothes that Jesus was wrapped in. And the clothes was lying there like he had, his, had them on. Which now tells me nobody unwrapped it. He just came out of it. Let me go on this side. Which now tells me that nobody unwrapped it. He just came out of it. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, if you didn't want to put your hands on me then, I don't need you to put your hands on me now. Me and God got this. I'm coming out of this. Come on, tag somebody and tell them, me and God got this. We got this. I tell you to grab somebody by the hand and tell them, we coming out of this. That's some good preaching right there. Just tag your neighbor and tell them, we coming out, we coming out. Watch this. So, 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 watch this. They got a myth going that says somebody stole his body. But the myth is, the, 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 watch this, they squashed that like right then. Because here's what happened in the tomb. When they came to the tomb, watch this, the napkin that was on his head had been wrapped and placed to the side. Now, 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 I want you to look at me. The Bible wasn't written to us in Petersburg. This is what folk don't tell you. Folk don't tell you stuff like this. They want to make it look pretty and all this. The Bible, okay. The Bible was written to Jews. And because the Bible was written to Jews, amen, they had customs. And one of their customs was, Lisby, that when you ate dinner at their house, and if you enjoyed the dinner, there was a certain way you had to wrap the napkin and put it in a particular place to let them know that you enjoyed yourself and you coming back. Man, that, that revelation messed me up every time, I, every time I talk about it. Tag your neighbor and tell him he enjoyed himself and he coming back. And so when they saw the napkin laid to the side, they know ain't nobody steal the body. Because why would you steal the body and wrap up the napkin? They knew that he got up out of those lips. I dare you to give your, I dare you to give God a praise and say, get up out of those grave clothes. People trying to wrap you up, trying to keep you bound, trying to keep you tied down. That devil is a lie. You ain't going to keep me wrapped up. You ain't going to keep me tied down. I'm coming out of this thing. So apparently Jesus got up. And when he got up, he took the napkin. 
and folded it. And he put it on the side. Look at me. So that everybody that saw it walked in the tomb and looked. Oh, my goodness. What he said is true. Because when he told the tables up, he told them and said, I am able to destroy this body and build it back up in three days. Watch this. They understood that he had got up out of the grave clothes. He had folded the napkin to let everybody that see it. I came. I enjoyed myself those 33 years while I was here. But I'm coming back. I need you to give God a praise if you know he's coming back. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Because after Mary Magdalene, she saw it. <coughs> Excuse me. She went running back. When she goes running back, she sees the God and the God. She, she thinks she's thinking it's the God, but it's really Jesus. And you remember what he said after three days. Everybody say, after three days. Three days. Say, I'll rise again. So she goes and Peter and James, I mean, excuse me, Peter and John come running. They come, they, they come running. Excuse me, they come running. And when they get there, they look in. John looks in. Peter goes in. Gets the revelation. They go back and tell the disciples. By the time they get back, Jesus come through the wall. Wait. I, and y'all see y'all missed that. See, watch this. He don't need your permission or the devil's permission to show up. He'll walk through walls for you. I said he'll walk through walls. He'll deal with banks. He'll deal with lawyers for you. Have God ever worked anything out for you and you didn't have anything to do with it? But you know that the Lord has his hands on it. And they knew it had to be him because when they come back, Jesus Walk, they have, they lost it. They're barricaded in with bars on the door, and Jesus just comes through the wall. Which brings me to this conclusion that there's a sudden moment that's going to happen in your life that you don't even know how it happened, where it happened, and when it happened. All you're going to know is that, it's, that it happened. Tag your neighbor and tell him, I know that it happened. It happened. It happened. He blessed my money. He extended my money. He kept my lights on. I kept my house. I kept my car. He put food on my table. He opened. All right, I'm about finished. I'm about finished. I'm trying to rush through. Two more things I'm going to tell you. And then, and then, they commanded, therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal the body away and say unto the people, he's risen from the dead. So the last arrow, watch this, shall be worse than the first. Pallet! Everybody needs a pallet. Everybody needs somebody that would do something so crazy that they think they're going to take you out. Pallet said unto them, you have your watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. My brother, the enemy wants to make it so hard for you to come out that it seems like unto yourself that you can't come out. But man, you in the right place at the right time today because the devil is a lie. The seal is about to be broken. I need about five people to give God a praise if you know the seal is about to be broken. That devil that's been trying to seal up your finances, the seal is about to be broken. That devil that's been trying to seal up your marriage, hurt your home, the seal is about to be broken. That devil is trying to seal and keep your kids, the seal is a, look at your neighbor and say, it's about to be broken. Come on, stand up with me. I'm almost finished. Now stand up for real. I'm finished preaching. I ain't finished, but I am finished. Lord told me to do something, so I got to do what Lord told me to do. See, just remain standing. I want you to stand up because that'll stop me from preaching. Wait, look, 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 y'all, look at me. And I want everybody with a show of hands. Have you ever went through something so crazy that it looked like you weren't going to make your way out of it? And, 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 
and I studied the seal. It was a Roman seal. And you could not break, once the Roman, once the Roman placed a seal on something, you could not break that seal. If you broke that seal, it was punishable by death. But the angels came. Tag your neighbor and tell them the angels came. Come on, touch somebody and tell them, aren't you glad that God sent his angels to watch over you? You were, you were acting crazy, doing big and bad stuff. Thanking you all that. God sent his angels. You thought it was the devil. You thought, you thought it was the devil ain't that wise. He ain't that wise to snatch the rug from up under you, make you go through something that hurts you so bad that you ain't got no other choice but to turn to God. Only God will do that. Only God will knock you down so low that can't nobody get you but Him. And then He'll reach down and pick you up and bring you back. Amen. And look like you ain't never been through nothing. It's resurrection time. Tag somebody and tell them it's resurrection time. I don't care what the enemy, what seal, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care what the seal is that the enemy is trying to placate you and, and, and place over your life. I come to tell you today that the seal has been broken. I come, I come, I come with a prophetic message today that the seal has been broken. You can't blame nobody else because watch this, when he breaks the seal, when he breaks the seal, that means, watch this, you're already out. You were out before the seal was broken. Remember, the angels broke the seal. And when they broke the seal, watch this, his body was gone. Which now tells me, even in the process of me being trapped, bound, going through all hell and high waters, I, I am literally set free before you see it. I'm literally set free. You're literally set free right now for next week. So that's why we walk by faith and not by sight, because we, it's all, let's tag somebody and tell them it's already, done. it's already done. Here's the whole, here's the whole, here's the whole kicker right here. Here's the whole kicker right here. You know that you're blessed. Okay, next time I'm going to tell you it's blessed. Oh, they put it up there? Everybody said blessed. Watch this. Not only was the tomb borrowed, and not only was the seal broken, but watch this. The disciples was blessed. Okay, somebody said, why are you talking about the disciples? Because the folk that stuck with you the most, oh God, you got to get this, are the folk that's going to enjoy your coming out party. Do I have any help in here? I'm not going to testify to everybody, but I'm going to testify to the ones that stuck with me when nobody else would. Look at your neighbor and say, we're about to have a coming out party. Come on, tag, tag about three people and tell them we're blessed like that. We're blessed like that. We're blessed. The question is, can you stick with him even though you're going through hell and high waters? Will you still praise him? Will you still worship him? Tag somebody and tell them I'm still blessed. It look crazy, but I'm still blessed. I'm going through, but I'm still blessed. The doctors have said, I'm sick, but I'm still blessed. Anybody still blessed? Wave those hands if you're still blessed. Tag your neighbor and tell them, this is my coming out party. Jesus went and joined them. And when he joined them there, he walks, he comes through the wall. Boom. It's only... It's only 10 there. Because remember, Thomas wasn't there, Lisby. Judas had hung himself. So it's only 10. And Jesus comes to the He joins them. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you ought to start giving him praise right now. Start giving him a praise right now. There's a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thing going on. There's a fourth man that's about to jump in. The, there's a fourth man. He's coming. Take somebody to tell him he's coming. And 
and he's coming in resurrected power. He come, he's coming transfigured. He told him, he said, do not touch me for I have not, I have not yet ascended to the Father. When two of the disciples were on their mayor's walk, the Bible says after they got their mayor's same and they sat at the table and watch this, Jesus broke bread and when he broke bread, he fed them. Boy, this is good. I'm, I'm trying to say that for next Sunday. He fed them and when he fed them, watch this, the whole time on their mayor's walk, they did not realize that they were talking to Jesus. But as soon as Jesus' hands touched the food that was going to be it, that, that they were going to eat and touch their body, all of a sudden their eyes were open. Which tells me that his touch gave them the revelation and clarification as to who he was. Tag your neighbor and tell him, that's why I'm blessed. Because I've been touched by God. Anybody been touched by God? Thank you for listening to Higher Way Ministries Petersburg Podcast. Please subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play to get all the episodes downloaded straight to your phone. You can also stay connected to our ministry by following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find the links to those pages in the show notes of today's podcast. Last but not least, if you have been blessed by today's podcast, please consider donating to Higher Way Ministries. It's because of our generous partners that we're able to reach lost souls and uplift the body of Christ with the teachings like the one you have heard today. You'll also find a link to our donations page in the show notes of today's podcast. So on behalf of our bishop, Darren L. Gay, and the entire Higher Way Church family, thank you so much and have a blessed day.